If you are a Linux user or maybe just bought a Steam Deck for your entertainment, then you might have already heard of the term immutable Linux distro. But what exactly is that? In layman terms, it's basically a more resistant desktop experience that locks all the important system configurations away and also overrides changes to them with each new update. And this has a lot of benefits, since you don't need to worry about making changes to things that you aren't supposed to do. It's often very well versioned between updates, meaning you can roll back at any time. And it's just generally less confusing, since you're kind of working around some of the things that Linux might be criticized for. But while an immutable Linux distribution might be a great solution for a device like the Steam Deck, let me just say that you might want to hold off before installing it on a regular desktop. Let's talk about it. So immutable distros seem to have become some sort of trend recently. You got of course the classic SteamOS 3 on the Steam Deck, Chimera and Vanilla OS, the Fedora Atomic Desktops, NixOS and many many more. The idea behind an immutable system is of course to basically hard separate users from messing with kernel and system files, so you effectively have no real control on your system outside of your home directory. Now theoretically speaking, for typical desktop use this should be plenty, since most of the stuff that you do on your system happens in here anyway. You can still customize your desktop, create shortcuts, access remote files and download and install applications. With applications in particular, you are however limited to flatpacks and snaps, since normally most distros and package managers are expecting elevated permissions and install applications on a system level, which of course won't work for us because the file system is only readable. Now for most applications this isn't a problem, but there are some that require deeper system dependencies which we can't install the regular way. And this is where it gets a bit more difficult. See, immutable distros do have ways to install set dependencies. On SteamOS for example, you need to make the file system writable first. And then you can install the programs with the Arch package manager. This however only works up until the next big update, whereas a new installation of SteamOS will essentially replace everything that wouldn't normally be accessible. So it can get quite annoying depending on what you install. On other distros like the Fedora Atomic Desktops, installing system packages can be done via the command line utility rpm-os3, which is adding the application to the file system itself. This is better suited if you want to make these programs survive updates, since they are now part of the immutable file system. Now with the versioning and everything this works exceptionally well, but it's also kind of a problem if we look at it from a beginner's perspective. See, choosing a Linux distribution is already a challenge for many, and if they are convinced to also use an immutable distro, then yes, they can't really break it, but they also can't really fix it either. In order to follow online guides, the user needs to know what distro they use, which flavor and sometimes even the desktop environment. Given that you often don't find useful information if you just search for solving an issue for Linux with an immutable distro, the results are even worse. My favorite example of this is of course one of the most notorious programs that you can install on Linux, DaVinci Resolve. When downloading Resolve, all you get is this .run file, which you execute with elevated permissions. Alright, already the first problem, since we would need to make our file system writable for that, which also means that the program is gone after the next big update. Same goes for the CUDA or ROCM OpenCL driver components, which are often not pre-installed. If some packages are missing or you need to do some troubleshooting, then with the read-only file system it becomes even more terrible than it already is. Sure, there is Distrobox, which is ideally also already pre-installed, but it depends on the distro or if it even uses OS tree to make the installation persistent. And using the command line is a no-go for beginners in the first place. So while many in the Linux community say that immutable distributions will be the future of the Linux desktop, I would definitely say the far future. As long as the documentation is vague, so that you can't just search the distro and you find both regular and immutable results, and as long as system packages cannot be graphically installed, it's not really beginner friendly on a desktop. Like for someone who just uses their PC for smaller tasks, I don't really think it makes much of a difference if the distribution they use is immutable or not. But if a certain problem arises and needs to be fixed, then the regular one is much easier to handle. But that being said, those are just beginner things and don't even necessarily apply to everyone. 
I gotta say, if we don't look at it from this perspective, and you occasionally are fine with using the command line for some advanced stuff, then immutable distros are actually kind of sick. Especially the versioning and rollback functionality are a big hit in the online community. It's straightforward, if an update were to break something, maybe even a self-programmed custom application, you can just roll it back, and you don't really have to worry about anything really. It's basically a verified as working distro, and if you don't use any extremely hard to install programs, or don't use something low level like Piper, then an immutable distro might actually be the way to go. It's far more resilient to errors, everyone gets a similar experience, and you can easily fix the OS if something actually were to go wrong. For me personally, I already feel like that immutable distros are best suited for specialized devices like a gaming console, or if you were to sell your own hardware that has this in mind. But I also think that it's not really that great of an idea for the general public just yet. For anything you search online, you rarely get results for an immutable distro, so you need to know what you're using and what to search for. For a Linux user like me, this might seem obvious, but it's not to everyone. Overall speaking, I find it incredible that immutable distros exist, and many of you seem to be happy with them. Taking one step further, I also think that immutable Linux distributions can also find a place in businesses, whereas it's much easier to control what users are even able to break. Come to think of it, this would actually be kind of perfect, especially for fixing a broken update because the user got impatient and just restarted their system. Yeah, that happens, even if there was a prompt that says, do not restart your PC right now. With an immutable distro, you could simply roll back, even from another machine, if it was entirely broken. And that's pretty awesome. And yeah, immutable Linux distributions. In my opinion, not quite suited for everyone just yet, but they already have practical applications today. And that's where I'll leave it. Before I end this video, I quickly wanted to mention that if you want to support the channel, make even better videos, then please feel free to check out the channel membership program, as well as our online shop, whereas each sale helps to support various open source projects. I also really want to know your thoughts on immutable Linux distros, so please make sure to leave a comment down below. If you've liked this video, then please make sure to show it with a like, and also don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more Linux videos just like this one. Thank you so much for watching, and all that's left to say now is good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are. I'll see you around.